Cubase will allow you to import already existing audio into a project uh, from a sound file on your computer. So this tutorial is going to look at how to do that. I have here two sound files. This is sound file 1.wav and sound file 2. This is what they sound like if I play them in a media player. There's the first one. And there's the second one. So we're going to have a look at how to import those into Cubase, into a Cubase project. Uh, no project open at the moment, so I'm going to create a new one. Uh, on the D drive, I'm going to create a brand new folder for it. So let's call it test importing audio. OK, there is our empty project. Straight away, I'm going to save it in the same folder, my test importing audio project. So a little bit of a reminder about what Cubase does when you create a project that way. If we go and look in the D drive, we can see the folder that I just created, test importing audio. There's the project file and Cubase has automatically created a folder called audio inside there. We're going to return to that in a moment. In the meantime, back to the Cubase project. To import the audio files which are on the desktop of the computer at the moment, I go to the file menu, the import menu, submenu, and I choose to import an audio file. You can import audio from various other sources, which you can see here, but these are just bog standard audio files, so I'm going to choose that. Now it asks you to find the sound file that you want to import. Uh, I'm already looking at the desktop, which is where the files happen to be, uh, and I can see them there. Uh, if they weren't there, this is where I could navigate to the relevant location on the hard disk and find them. Notice in this dialog we've got a list of the types of audio file that Cubase can import. These are WAV files, but you can see from this list that it's possible to import uh, quite a large number of different types of audio file. So I'm going to choose the first one and click on open. Now this is a very important dialog box that we're seeing here. And um, it's asking, and, and this is the important option here, it's asking if we want to copy the file to the working directory. Now, it's good practice always to copy audio files when you import them. Always choose copy file to working directory. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate why that is so important by this time not choosing to copy the file to the working directory. So I'm not going to tick this option here. I'm going to click OK. It's created me an audio track uh, and it's imported my sound file to it. I can play it. I can do everything uh, that I can do with another with, with any kind of event in Cubase. I can duplicate it, I can edit it and delete it and so on. So far, so good. So let's save the project and close it. So I'm finished with that. Let's say I don't need the sound file anymore because I've already imported it. So I'm going to delete it. And now I'm going to try and reopen the project that I just created. So file, menu, open. Let's choose the uh, project that I just created, test importing audio. There's the project file. I try to open it again, and because I've just deleted the file and I didn't copy it to the working directory, it's now telling me that it's missing. So it knows that there's supposed to be something there, but it can't find the sound file. So now, unless I'm in a position where I'm able to locate exactly the same sound file again, uh, we're in trouble. I'm not going to be able to play back the project. If I close this, try and play the project, we don't get any sound at all. So let's start again and see how uh, it should be done. I'm going to copy the file back to the desktop. So we're back to square one. Into Cubase, new project, do exactly the same thing that I did before. Save the project over the previous one. File, import audio file, 
exactly the same as we did before, open, except this time I'm going to choose copy file to the working directory. Notice that it's imported it where the cursor was, but I can move that back to the start if I want. Save the project, close Cubase, minimize that for the time being. Now, navigate to the D drive, test importing audio, there's my project folder. Because I chose copy the file to the working directory, if I go into the audio folder, I can now see that there is a copy of my sound file here. Cubase has also automatically created a folder called images, which is where it stores all of the little graphics of the waveforms that you see in the project window when you've got audio events on the timeline. So now I can do exactly the same as I did before, delete my original sound file, get rid of that, go back to Cubase, open the project again, and we're fine. So now I'll just quickly reiterate that. I'm going to import a second sound. File menu, import, audio file. I'm going to choose sound file 2. Copy file to working directory. It's already ticked. So I can do that. Now notice that it imported it to the same track. So now if I play through, we're going to hear the two imported files on the same audio track. If I'd wanted to import it to a different track, what I would have done is created another audio track first, and then when I import the file, it will import it to whichever track is selected at the time when you choose import. When I imported those files, uh, it imported them to what is called in Cubase the pool. Now I can bring up the pool window with the control P keyboard shortcut. And this shows you all of the uh, audio and video assets that you've imported so far. If I extend this menu, we can see the two sound files that I've imported here. It tells me that they're both used once during the project. So for example, if I copy and paste this a second time, go back to the pool with control P, it will now tell me that sound file two is used twice. Now, even if I delete uh, these from the timeline, Cubase uses what is known as non-destructive editing. So if I want to get those back again, I don't need to import them again because, control P, they're still in the audio pool. So I can just drag them back out of there, control P again, and get them back. I can edit this one, let's say I chop the start and the end off it, do the same with this one. And because the editing is non-destructive, if I copy and paste this, I can actually restore, restore it to its original state. So finally, save the project, close Cubase, and as always, back up the entire project folder, which includes all of the sound files, to another location. On this occasion, I'm going to copy it across to a network drive.